Today, I'm going to be sending 100 messages to 100 celebrities to see how many of them respond to the things of God. To make things a little bit interesting, I want to let you into a secret. Number 100 is actually a celebrity who I've spoken to before, and until this day, I've kept it totally silent. So let's see if you can guess who that celebrity is. Here are the clues. He's in his 80s, he's a world famous actor, and he was in a saga of films that really spread across the whole world, and I believe probably 90 percent of the people watching this video today have watched one of his movies. So over to you, who do you think this celebrity actor is? Okay, let's start with the man of the hour. Let's start with Jake Paul. That's right, you captured Floyd's hat, but has Jesus captured your heart? Right, should we go across to um, his brother Logan Paul? What if I write this? I'll box you for free if you are willing to read all of John's Gospel. Let's try Emma Watson. What if I said Harry Potter's a terrible book but I've never read it before? So why is it people say the Bible's a load of rubbish but they've never read it before? Will Smith. We've got a, we've got a message Will Smith. On a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you believe in God? 1 being there is no God and 10 there definitely is a God. Johnny Depp. Now see if you catch this. You played Captain Jack Sparrow but is Jesus the captain of your salvation. To Harry Styles, another Englishman like myself. Are you an atheist? Do you think that's a bit strong? I'll send it anyway. Are you an atheist? Lady Gaga, if you could ask God one question, what would it be? And let's go across to Katy Perry. Now Katy Perry's father, I believe, was a Pentecostal pastor, so I'll ask her this. Why did you reject your Christian upbringing? Because I heard in an interview that she actually doesn't want anything to do with Christianity. It's Kevin Hart, the comedian. Can't sleep tonight. Don't count sheep. Talk to the shepherd. Pink, okay. Uh, you were born on the same day as my brother. She was on the 8th of September. But have you been born again? And since we're thinking of my brother's birthday, we better think of my birthday too. Let's see who's born on my birthday. Jeffree Star. Well, the Lord must want Jeffree Star to hear something similar. You're born on the same day as me, but have you been born again? Let's try Leonardo DiCaprio. Everyone's heard of him, haven't they? Let me write this. Unlike Rose in Titanic, once you take hold of Jesus' hand, he'll never let go. Michael Phelps, the Olympic swimmer. If you can't swim, <laughs> don't panic, because my lifeguard walks on water. Jennifer Aniston, let's try her next. There is a friend who sticks closer than a brother, and his name is Jesus. And let me just say this, if you've not yet invited that friend into your life, you need to do it right now, because he will change your entire world. Mike Tyson, in his prime, probably the most scary man on the planet. Let me write this. Many fear you, but do you fear the living God? Okay, we're over halfway there. Number 53, Aaron Ra. Now, I don't think many of you will have heard of Mr. Aaron Ra. He's an atheist, but I actually had a debate with him in 2018, so I'm going to ask him about that. Do you remember our debate about God? at Hyde Park Speakers Corner 2018. Zach King is a massive social media influencer. Let's ask him this. Do you believe Jesus is King? Let's try Tom Hanks. Will you ever run into Jesus' arms? Jamie Oliver. Have you heard of him, the, the, English, uh, the English chef? Let's go to him. Um, have you ever eaten of the bread of life? Gordon Ramsay, let's go to the next chef. He's not as nice as, uh, as Jamie Oliver. You've tasted a lot of things in your life. But have you tasted that the Lord is good? Conor McGregor, you fought a lot of fights in your life, but have you ever fought the good fight? Who's the richest man in the planet? I believe it's a man called Jeff Bezos, or Bezos, the guy who invented Amazon. Jesus is the hidden treasure. Have you found that treasure for yourself? Dr. Dre, Jesus is a great physician. Do you know my doctor? I'm gonna send a message to Brandon Flowers, you know, the lead singer of The Killers. Jesus Christ is the lily of the valley. Have you smelt his goodness yet? Lil Wayne, you wear a lot of bling, but have you found the pearl of great price? Adele, will you be in heaven's choir one day? Rebel Wilson, all of us are born rebelling against God, but we can all be reconciled through faith in Jesus Christ. The most muscly man on the planet, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Let's go to him. Jesus will be back one day. Will you be ready when he comes again? Tom Cruise, here's a mission impossible, trying to get to heaven 
without Jesus Christ. Right, we're down to the last 10 now. Russell Crowe, you're a gladiator, but have you ever wrestled with God? Orlando Bloom, you've been the leading character in some of the best films, but is Jesus the leading character in the film of your life? Quite like that one, if I do say so myself. <laughs> Lil Nas X, you know that I made a video about him recently. Montero was very painful for me to watch, but it's not too late for you to come to Christ and turn of your sins. And last but not least, number 100, Ian McKellen. Do you remember me? We chatted about God in 2017. So believe it or not, Gandalf is actually the celebrity that I got to share the gospel with in 2017. Now. I guess the one thing that discouraged me is every time I tried to talk about Jesus, he changed the subject. And it was quite interesting, really. It doesn't matter whether you're a world famous Hollywood actor or whether you're just the average atheist on the streets. The devil does not like people to talk about Jesus. Many people believe in God. In fact, hell will be full of many people who believe in God. But it's only faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who can cleanse away our sins, the one who died for sinners. It's only receiving him, the one who took the punishment for all of our wrong. That's the only way we get to heaven. And we kept talking. Eventually, a security guard said, come on, leave. But Ian McKellen said, no, no, he's okay. I'm quite happy to keep chatting to him. And Ian sort of closed the conversation by saying this, listen, Joe. I'm 78 years old. I've been there, I know all about it. I've made my own decision. Please do pray for Ian. His father was actually a Methodist lay preacher, so he knew the gospel, he knew the Bible, but just pray that God would convict him of sin and that he'd bring him to the Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. So, over to you now. Out of the hundred celebrities that I sent a direct message to, how many of them do you think got back in touch with me? Absolutely zero. No one responded. And if I'm honest, I'm a little bit disappointed. I was really praying that just one celebrity would get in touch with me and then I might be able to go into a deeper conversation about Jesus Christ. Now, before you go, I really do want to try and punch home a really important message. Every single one of us has one of these, I'd imagine. Most of us have got a social media account. And when you go on a train, when you go on the subway, what is everyone doing? They're scrolling, they're spending time on their smartphones. So you and I need to take this opportunity with both hands. And I want to encourage every single one of you to become an online evangelist. So very quickly, I'm gonna give you seven tips, seven tips of how you can share the gospel and become a digital missionary. Number one, share your testimony. Every single one of us has a story to tell. Every single one of us has a unique way that the Lord Jesus Christ saved us. And there are people that you know that I don't know. There are people that you will reach that will never ever listen to me, your friends, your family. So I want every single one of you today, get your phone out and just pull it out and start recording yourself and share what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for you. When we read the Gospels, that's exactly what happened. Minus the phone, of course. They just went into the streets and they told people, come and meet a man who told me everything about myself. Come and meet a man who changed me, who healed me, who redeemed me, who saved me. And that's what you and I can do. Now you might be thinking, but Joe, I don't know where to start. Well, three questions. You just have to ask yourself three questions. The first thing is this, what were you like before? So before I was a Christian, I was on drugs. I was a stoner. I liked partying. I wanted to be a professional actor. I was quite worldly, quite selfish. That's what I was like before. Number two, what was it that changed you? What was the turning point? So for me, it was when the pastor of my church had a conversation with me and I realized I need to stop running from God. Make sure you make the gospel very clear at this point. And then three, what is life like now? Is it a bed of roses being a Christian? Is it easy to be a Christian? It's not, is it? But also talk about how precious it is is to know the living God as your friend and saviour. Number two, translate Christian videos. I bet you didn't know this about me, but I can actually speak four different languages. I can speak to Americans, I can speak to British people, I can speak to Australians, and I can speak to South Africans. Oh, and also New Zealand people as well, down under. I can speak to them too. Now, all jokes aside, I can't speak any languages, but some of you can. And God has given you a tremendous gift. And I just want to tell you, 
use it for the Lord. So why not take a Christian video and translate it, either do it audibly where you put the audible translation and you speak over the preacher, or put captions at the bottom, subtitles of everything they say in your own language. Because the fact is this, many of us can only speak English and we can't reach other nations, but you yourself can. And while we're on this topic, let me just say something else. Sometimes people message me and they say, Joe, do I have permission to take one of your videos and post it on my own Facebook page or on my own channel? And I want to say, absolutely, please feel free to take any of my messages to translate them or even just keep them in their own language. Please use my videos. They don't belong to me anyway. They belong to the Lord. Number three, why not try posting John 3.16 on your social media account or through email? There is nothing more powerful than the Word of God. It's like a sword. It's sharper. It cuts straight through to the heart and you can reach unbelievers by just simply posting a Bible verse. Go on Google, type in John 3.16, download the image and post it on Facebook, on TikTok, on Instagram, on WhatsApp. Send it out and get it out to the world. Now, let me just give you a little tip on this. Sometimes people do this and they're a little bit overzealous shall we say everything they post is always Christian and I would say a good rule of thumb is every one out of seven posts let it be a Christian post you see if it's always Christian then people might switch off or your friends might feel like you're always preaching to them but if it's pictures of your dog your family the iced coffee that you bought this week and then the seventh one it is John 3 16 or is 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21 if it's not overdone people are more likely to listen and more likely to respond to it. Something I did when I first started out on YouTube was I used to go on Reddit and I used to just dump all of my links on different subreddits and people got really really annoyed. Why? Because it was very selfish of me. Just watch my video, just do that. But I wasn't part of the community and that's something you need to do is be part of the community, comment on people's photos, comment on people's posts and links and then they're more likely to trust you when you say hey what do you think of this video or hey what do you think about this Bible Verse. Number four, and perhaps the most easy way to share the gospel, is to press the share button. You see, many, many Christian YouTubers, many Christian channels have got lots of Christian videos with the gospel so clearly in it. Not just on mine, there are loads of channels out there. And if you see a video that really does present the death, the resurrection, repentance and forgiveness of sins all through Jesus Christ, and you think, wow, that's a good video, the best thing you can do is just press the share button or maybe just again take the link and email it to your friends and your family members don't say watch this now it's so important just say what do you think of this video or maybe post it on a blog or maybe post it on a popular newspaper page like Fox News or on an article and just say what do you think of this video? And who knows what could happen by you just literally doing something so simple, so easy, pressing the share button. Someone might just get saved through your efforts. Number five promote your local church. Anyone who's watched my videos before knows that my passion is that we're not just consuming Christian content all day long on the internet, but actually that every bird needs a nest. And you and I need a local fellowship where we're built up, we're encouraged, and we're kept accountable. So why not, if your church doesn't have a Facebook page, why not set one up? If your church doesn't have a website, why not set one up? If your church is running an evangelistic barbecue or an evangelistic event, why not share the link on your Facebook page? Invite your friends, message friends, and say, please come along to our church services. And again, who knows what God can do when a man or woman enters into a church and hears the preaching of the Word of God. I think mighty things can be achieved through that. Number six. DM people. Now, as you can see, perhaps DMing celebrities isn't the best use of your time, but why not send a direct message to someone on Facebook, perhaps that person you went to school with who you've lost touch with, or send an email to an old work colleague, hey man, I really miss you. It'd be great if we could meet up for a coffee sometime. And once you do meet up with them, pray to the Lord that you would get opportunities to share about the Lord Jesus Christ. And lastly, number seven, use the comments section on social media. The truth is this guys, people on social media will write things, very personal things, that they would not say to you if they were face to face. And you and I have again a tremendous opportunity to reach people because I don't think we realize
realise these are real people who write these comments. Some people write, I'm struggling with this. My family member has just died. Help me to believe in God. And it breaks my heart because I just cannot reach all of these people. If one of my videos gets a thousand comments as one man, there's no way I can reach all of these precious souls. So it really does bless the socks off me when I see another believer sharing Jesus Christ with other people on the channel. And don't just comment back on Christian channels. Go onto a non-Christian channel and again, post a Bible verse. You will be amazed at how many people will see that verse and will enter into a dialogue with you. Now, a word of warning here. We need to be careful that we don't get into arguments. Personally, I've never ever seen any good that comes through a social media argument. An atheist will sometimes attack you and they'll try and trip you up. But at all times, we need to be gentle and loving because we are ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, if you would like to see that playlist of all the videos of mine that have been translated into different languages, perhaps one's been translated in your language, please click here. And if you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do click here. We'd love your friendship here at Off The Curb Ministries. God bless you all and thank you for watching.